Hey gang, last username here. So uh, I'm watching Generic B and, on Hermitcraft and he is talking about how he wants to make a bread machine that doesn't use any pistons. So bread machine is this machine that lets you harvest wheat really, really fast just by holding a button down. Um, and usually it uses uh, pistons to harvest the wheat and also to uh, to detect when the wheat grows. So piston bud switches uh, are involved. Um, but for some reason, Generic B doesn't like the sound of pistons. I don't know why. Pistons sound lovely to me. But uh, to each his own. So he uh, challenged his viewers to make a bread machine that doesn't use any pistons. And I have um, made a few attempts at that. This is my, my first attempt. Um, the, the challenges here are First of all, harvesting the wheat without a piston, and that's pretty much a solved problem already. Um, you do that with a redstone lamp um, by making it dark inside the, uh, the chamber momentarily uh, will cause the wheat to pop out of the ground. So that's, that's an easy problem. The hard part is detecting the wheat growing without using a piston bud. And my first attempt to solve that problem is to not detect the wheat growing at all, but rather to just use a uh, timing mechanism to control the whole machine. So let me show you how that, how that works. Um, it's very simple. I haven't made the wiring nice yet, so it's still kind of bulky, but it does work. Um, let's just go into survival mode here and close the door, seal off the light, and I'll step on the plate and then there'll be a brief delay for me to aim at the farmland and then it will start. So here we go. And as you can see this works really well. It's really fast. Um, much faster than you could, uh, you could do with a bud, I think. Uh, the only problem with this is that I'm fairly certain it will only work in single player. I don't think it'll work in SNP multiplayer because uh, the network latency will mess with the timing and I, I'm pretty sure it just won't be reliable. Um, but this is a pretty good solution for single player. You can harvest a lot of wheat really fast. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, but I did want to make something that would work in multiplayer and I'm pretty sure that's what Generic B wanted as well. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought about how to make a pistonless bud that uh, could be used in a machine like this. Now Generic B was showing off one, um, a pistonless bud switch that uses glowstone. And that almost worked, but the problem is the glowstone uh, will prevent that will prevent the room from becoming dark and so you won't be able to harvest the the wheat this was the problem so um, I did manage to uh, figure out another kind of bud switch that is pistonless and doesn't use any glowstone um, I made a separate video for that it's the video right before this one so you can go watch that if you're interested I'm not going to go over it again but basically it looks like this. So it takes advantage of a glitch with, uh, with uh, redstone power propagation. Basically uh, power coming into a redstone wire from two different places will kind of get clogged up and it won't update properly. Um, and, um, and again I won't explain it the whole thing. Uh, the other video explains it much better. But basically you update that block right there, and the redstone torch pulses. So it's this block of this redstone dust right here is the sensor. That's it, and um, and yeah. So I then thought about how to incorporate that into a bread machine, um, and. The thing is, if you're using a bud, and you're not using a T-bud, toggle bud, then you also need to toggle the machine back and forth somehow. Um, and one way to do that is to 
just hook a T-flip flop up to the butt switch. But I thought that would be, well, that is too slow. Uh, Generic B was, was showing that off and demonstrating how slow that is, and that is indeed a problem. And my solution to that <clears throat> was to not use a T-flip flop at all, but rather to uh, use a technique that I also used in my light sensors, um, where I used two butt switches and have them toggle each other on and off. So here's what that would look like. I basically got a pair of those things. They're slightly reconfigured, but it's the same basic mechanism. And the sensor blocks are both right next to the place where the crops will be planted. So um, anything that happens in this block here will, will trigger both bud switches. But um, the torches on the bud switches are cross-connected to each other. Um, and they're wired up just like a, an RS North latch. So the effect of that is that um, each, when one bud switch pulses, it will turn the other one on and turn itself off and vice versa. So every time this updates, the entire state of the machine will toggle, which is, of course, exactly what we want. Pretty slick, huh? So from there, um, it was pretty straightforward. Um, I just had to cram that all into a machine and put all the other parts in. And what I eventually came up with was this. Uh, this is with uh, all of the sort of covering stripped away with, this, with everything exposed um, as much as possible. So you can see the, the wiring here, which I, I tried to keep underground. Um, the dispensers here, which are basically just wired up directly to the two bud switches. Um, the door here to seal off the light. And uh, instead of sealing off the entire machine, I the approach I took here was just to seal off the space with the the crops in it, and but have the dispensers outside. And you stand outside and you just plant the crops through this gap. And because the gap is made of slabs, which light cannot pass through, it actually will stay dark inside there. You can see that this entire room here is completely uh, walled in with half slabs. So even though there's all these gaps here, no light can actually get in this room. The only light's coming from that redstone lamp there. Um, and uh, and this and da, 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 da. okay. So the other thing here is that these these are the butt switches, the sensors. Um, I I raised them up above the rest of the wiring so that I could seal off the room easily. And uh, and because I sealed it with half slabs, it doesn't cut the wires. So so that works. Um, anyway, let's see it go. Close that off. All oh, these dispensers are empty, of course. No problem. And get rid of the excess. We need one seed to start. Go to survival. And let's see if this works. Perfect. So not quite as fast as the single player version, but should be completely reliable in multiplayer. And once you got enough, just open up the door and grab everything out of there. And, uh, of course, I would never leave uh, anything looking like that, so I sealed it all up, made it look all pretty, totally seamless, and uh, even added these, light, these lights outside that are 
These are connected to uh, the two bud switches, so they'll toggle back and forth as the machine switches states. I don't know why, just for kicks. Let's have another go here. These are not empty, you? No, they're not. Okay. And nope, that didn't work. Oh, I'm in creative mode, that's why. Uh, there we go. So there you go, this is it, the uh, pistonless, uh, totally almost silent except for some clicking bread machine. Uh, I'm last username, don't fill up on bread. <laughs>